In a previous video, I described how sex chromosomes pair and segregate. In a mammal, the female forms a single egg type. The male makes two types of sperm. It is heterogametic. The resulting progeny is either male or female depending on which sperm fertilizes the egg. In human, a diploid organism that is often heterozygous, each nucleus has one sex pair and 22 autosomal pairs. Autosomal alleles often differ in some ways. Most of the times, both alleles of a locus are functional. For any gene, there are two chances of getting a functional copy. X and Y chromosomes are very different from each other. In human, the X is large and carries around 800 protein coding genes. The Y is small with fewer genes, about 60. Of these, only around 18 are shared with the X. Thus, the X has normal gene density, while the Y has very few genes. Over most of their lengths, X and Y are very different, but at the very ends the two chromosomes behave like autosomes and are nearly identical. The two common regions are called pseudo-autosomal region 1, or PAR1, and PAR2. To summarize, the blue DNA of X carries many genes that are not present on Y. Blue and green DNA cannot pair, but X and Y are capable of pairing at meiosis through the homologous regions PAR1 and PAR2. In a male, there are two alleles for the very few genes carried on the PARs. However, for the majority of X genes, there is no Y allele. The male is therefore effectively monosomic for this region of X. Males have only one chance of getting a functional X-linked gene. Next, let's consider how this arrangement works from the point of view of gene dosage. A human female has two X chromosomes and carries two alleles for each of the 800 plus genes encoded in X. By contrast, a male has a single X and, therefore, the majority of X genes exist as single copies. This is a problem from the point of view of dosage. Dosage is the amount of a given molecule present in a cell. In general, the more copies of a gene, the more copies of its product. Females have a gene dosage of 2 for all of their genes, including those on X. Males also have two doses of genes on the autosomes, but have only one dose for X-linked genes. What are the implications of gene dosage? Cell biochemistry is like a complex pie recipe with 20,000 ingredients. The dosage of some ingredients can be changed without problems, but the dose and balance of many ingredients is critical. Males are effectively aneuploids. For their X-linked genes, they only inherit one allele, and they would make less product than females, which are XX. This, however, is an unacceptable outcome, as it would result in death. How is the problem of X dosage solved? A scientist named Susumu Ono discovered that something unusual happens to one of the two X's. It is turned into inactive chromatin, which appears as a bar body, a densely staining structure. Each female nucleus displays a bar body. In the 50s, Mary Lyon proposed that inactivation occurred early in embryogenesis and was random. This effectively equalizes dosage of X-linked genes across sexes. Adult cells of both males and females have a single active X. Calicos, nearly always XX females, are heterozygous for a coat color gene. One X has the O plus allele that specifies black color coat. The other has the O allele that specifies orange color coat. If one or the other is inactivated in the growing embryo, the corresponding cells are left with a single active allele. The zygote and early embryo have two active X. X inactivation occurs at later stages. This results in a chimeric embryo. Black patches, for example, are formed by cells that descend from a single cell in which the O allele was inactivated and the O plus was left active. The chimeric embryo develops into a chimeric animal. Black and orange skin patches express, respectively, the O plus or the O allele. White patches are due to an unrelated autosomal gene, S for spotted, S plus for not spotted, that hides the effect of the black-orange color gene. The calico black and orange variation is an example of an epigenetic trait. An epigenetic trait is one that is heritable clonally or sexually, but not dependent on DNA change. The orange or black allele is silent because it is on the inactivated X. Compacted chromatin forming the bar body suppresses expression. Open chromatin on the active X favors expression. We need to clarify something. If one X is inactivated, why do females still display diploid genetics for most X-linked traits? For example, hemophilia, an X-linked trait, is recessive. A big H, little h female is never affected. There are two reasons. First, many genes act early in development when both X are active. 
Second, chimerism rescues the effect of recessive loci. For example, parts of the body of a big H little h woman are big H and produce the right blood clotting factor. In summary, most genes on X are not present on Y. Females, XX, have two copies versus one copy in males, XY. This arrangement would create strong cellular imbalance in males. One X chromosome in XX cells undergoes epigenetic inactivation during development, equalizing adult X-linked dosage between sexes.